the one thing we never thought we'd see, Stephen Elop mentioning the word Android, and yes, we are running it, though this is a very different version of Android. This is the Nokia XL, the Nokia X and X Plus. Let's talk about him. Tony behind the camera, Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now. This is MWC. Now what you're seeing here is the Nokia X Plus and the Nokia X. The differences between these phones are quite, quite significant because this one is a five inch display, four inch display. This one is focused more on the entry level market. And even though this phone is an entry level phone, it is much bigger, four inch display, five inch display here. Both of these phones run a forked version of Android. So the only difference, for example, between the, the X and the X Plus is the amount of RAM. You have 768 megabytes of RAM on this one. You have 512 megabytes of RAM on the X and then on the XL, which I wish would not turn itself off, we have 768 megabytes of RAM. Now, this phones run a one gigahertz Snapdragon processor, which is dual core on each side. They have very limited memory, but you do have expandable storage here. Both phones are dual SIM card phones, but the big news here is really Android. This is Android, but this is not really Android. This is like what you see on the Amazon Kindle. It's a completely forked version of Android up to the point where it does look like Windows Phone, but it doesn't really perform like Windows Phone at all. It is very fluid though, looks really nice. You can create folders. Now, one of the cool things here is you can run Android applications, but keep in mind, these are not the Google Play Store applications. This phone doesn't have an unlocked bootloader. We really don't know if you're gonna be able to sideload applications yet, but one thing I will tell you is there is a Nokia store that runs Android applications. And obviously these phones are, even though these phones are focused for the entry level market, you have to remember, the Asha phones are for the entry, entry level. We're even talking about a 29 Aero Asha phone. These ones are focused on the $99, 99 Aero market and they are completely different because the Lumia phones are gonna be the more higher end phones. Now, another difference between this X Plus and the X is obviously five megapixel camera here with a flash, three megapixel camera here without a flash. And probably one of the cool things about this design, here are the dual SIM cards. You've got the replaceable battery. You've got the camera with the flash, but look at this. I mean, it's a complete unibody plastic case that if you drop your phone, you can just completely replace for another one. So just snap this in here and you have your good looking phone that you could replace at any time. Now, going back to the UI, this is a very nice UI. Like for example, you lock the display from side to side. And once you're here, you only have two panes, which is the principal pane with different applications, different services, and then you swipe to your recents, and these recents can even include your social media. Now, if you're asking what version of Android we're running here, this is just based on Be Jelly Bean, but we don't know exactly which version of Jelly Bean. This, again, is a fork version of Android, and it just gives you the model, PM1030, but it doesn't really tell you what version of Android you're running. You could notice, for example, that you do have if we could move back here. We do have developer options. There is USB debugging. It actually looks a lot like Android when you go into the settings. For example, you can create different services here just like you would on Android. Now, keep this in mind, for example, as Stephen Elop was mentioning, they don't plan to send you to the Google Cloud. They want to send you to the Microsoft Cloud. So this is OneDrive. This is Skype. This is really everything based on Google services. You have everything else, the backup and reset. Fastlane is the name of the UI, by the way. And again, you can add your social feed into this, manage history, manage notifications. It pretty much works a lot like Android. Now, going through some additional specifications, this phone is running an IPS LCD display. Viewing angles are very, very good, actually, even though this is a WVGA 800 by 480 display. I can't remember the last time I saw this resolution, but, you know, it actually does look very crisp on the display. Aside from that, you also get, as we mentioned, 4 gigabytes of internal storage, 2,000 milliamp hour battery on the XL, and we do not have a dedicated camera button, but let's look at the UI got white balance, we've got exposure, we've got the flash controls, uh, face detection, noise reduction, obviously there is no optical limit stabilization here. Uh, and you do have some manual options here which are really interesting even though we can't really confirm 
what type of video recorder we have here. We're going to have to look into this a bit further when we review this device eventually. But so far, again, it looks strictly basic. Now let's be specific. For 89 euros, 99 euros, or 109, there is really not much we can ask. If you notice, it is a little bit slow to take the photographs, but again, this phone actually looks quite premium, and you won't have to be dealing with the fact that you're missing applications from your phone at a very reasonable price. Again, we're going to continue looking at these phones. These are, again, entry-level phones. This XL will be available later, later this year. We're going to have definitely a review on these devices, mid-range devices. Jaime Rivera from Pocketnow.com. Tony behind the camera. Nokia here with just about everything they released. We'll see you soon for more.